What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. Price of Bitcoin currently at 87.27. I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of the markets. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so basically, folks, what we see right now, all right, is uh, price action is developing in this particular range, as you can see. Okay, now usually in ranges like this, what Bitcoin tries to do, all right, and I guess it's not really Bitcoin, it's really the bots and the algos behind it, is they basically try to take out liquidity on both sides, right? So for number one, I'll give you an example, right? So here's the first low that was created, right? And then that was the first high, okay? So what we do is we mark out the range from this high to this low. And we say, okay, well, this is a low, right? Price is going to, like I said, trying to take out both sides of the range. So here the algo is doing their work, took out the first area right there, the low again, the second low again, and then the third low again. What this does is anyone who was, say, long in this area right here, they probably had their stop somewhere down here, right? So if they're stopped and hit on this one, it definitely hit on this one, or it definitely hit on this one. Okay, so you're thinking, what is the purpose of doing that? Well, this is all liquidity hunting, right? Remember that Bitcoin, uh, by and large, is a speculative asset, and it's a fairly illiquid market, okay? So for the bots to create efficiency in this market to be able to move it the way they do, they have to go out and hunt as much liquidity as possible. And at the end of the day, you know, the bots are also just trying to make money for, you know, whatever fund or institution that they're working for. Okay, so their job is to essentially either create range, um, you know, hold down a price, hold up a price, etc. Right, and this is not just visible, you know, when the bots are trying to push the prices down. It could be visible when the bots are trying to push it back up. Right. So let me give you an example. So by the time you watch this video, maybe you might see this come true. Okay. So as I mentioned, we took out this range by this this and this, right? So now we're looking to take out the high of this range, okay? So we should be doing is from here, we should be going something like this, maybe something like that, pull, pull down a little bit, and then going for this range high right here. And that's around uh, 87, $8,800, okay? Now, does that mean that we have to, once we come back down and go up, does that mean we have to go straight up? Not necessarily, right? Because this is where the larger time frames come into play. Okay, if we start going on the one hour time frame, right, we can clearly see that the um, one hour time frame has showed us that we had a strong rejection right here, basically a you know short uh, stop hunt right there, and then a big aggressive sell off. All right, so what we're doing right now is we're still basically in a downtrend, right? There's, there's really no denying that you're in a downtrend right now. So even if right? We come back towards the range high up here, right? That could be a potential shorting opportunity to the downside, given the fact that all we've really done is, you know, over the past several hours is we've just sold off from, where is it? 92.25 high all the way down to about the uh, 86.90 low. All right. So good four or $500 movement in price action to the downside. And really what we're you know, kind of stuck in right now is this, okay? So let me pull up the 30 minute chart. So if you watch my previous videos, right, you will see I had drawn this black box and I told my Advantage members, and I think I told the free side as well, that, hey, this is the black box that's kind of, you know, really holding price up as a pivot or holding it down as a pivot. Okay, so you could see right here in the black box, it was support right there, broke up, broke down, use it as resistance against support, broke down, resistance, 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 and then finally broke up, support, support. And so point is, you know, we're basically now coming back to that same area of support. But what we're really doing is we're kind of just grinding on support. Usually what you want to say, you want to come, pop back up, or come back, pop up, double bottom, and then pop out. Okay, but what we're really doing is we've now spent about what is this um about 12 to 14 hours here okay so really not a good sign in making the case that hey we could be bouncing up from here okay now if it was 12 to 14 hours where price you know came down like this and then it started doing something like this where it's higher lows and then it started pushing out i'd say there's a higher chance that this thing could push back out but for the most part what it's really doing is it's you know put in a low another lower low, another lower low. So if we are right, right, we can go back to this range high chart and we could say, 
hey, it's very possible that we can come back up, take out this range high, and then sell back down, okay? I would probably say that has a higher potential for price to stop out some shorts or you know maybe even some late shorts we're shorting down here. Go up here, stop those people out where they had um, short stops up here and then resolve down, okay? So that's really the way I'm looking at price action right now. Uh, for the most part, you know, the last couple, couple of days, I took maybe two or three losses, okay? And I'm not getting afraid to show my losses as I've shown, shown you guys before. I, I show my winners, right, as you can see, and I also show my losses. But for the most part, we try to contain our losses as much as possible, all right? Even over here, you know, you can see that um, our entry point was around uh, 88, 89. And then I think we just got wicked out just maybe $20 above that, okay? Now in hindsight, you know, we can say that, okay, that was over here, right? What we can say is the same argument that I made right here, right? We created a higher the range, a lower the range, okay? So let's draw that out. So if this was the first bounce from the range, right? I should have said, okay, well, looks like what price is doing is it create a low of the range, it create a high of the range, right? What price could be doing in this higher low structure is it's going to take out that range high and then potentially dump down. Now I had no idea that price was going to go back up from here, right? But if I started looking at the higher time frames again, if I started looking at the one hour where that happened, you could see overall price is still, I mean, aggressively bearish. So even if I punted my short right there, all right, and by the way, I'm going through the uh, analysis, I guess, you know, the post-mortem analysis of my trade, uh, because I wanted to show you guys how to essentially dissect your own mistakes when you get stopped out, um, when you make a mistake in your trades or you close out prematurely, et cetera, okay? So point is, you know, like I said, range high, range low. Price took out range high and then dumped, right? So all I had to do, was not set my stop just above this high, which is actually the mistake that I made. If you look over here, uh, I set my stop at 89.25. I thought that was wide enough where the price would not get past this area that high, but you can see price wicked about 89.31. So just $6 above my stop. Um, so what I should have done, okay, again, in hindsight, is I should have placed my stop up here or you know deeper, like way up into this area somewhere up here. Okay, because just in case, I mean, price somehow wicked up here, which is a very deep wick, you know, those are unfortunate events anyway. There's no way for anyone to predict those. But if price wicked all the way up here, chances are it's probably going higher. So more, than, more, more often than not, okay, when price is trying to do its job of stopping out, you know, potential longs, it really just kind of moves maybe, you know, 15, 20, $25 below or above the, the key range high um, or range low, and then it continues to whatever direction it's going to be. So in this particular case, as you watch this price action unfold, whenever you do watch this video, watch this price take out this range high right there around $8,800 or maybe $8,815 or so, and then potentially come back down, okay? This could be your shorting opportunity. Your stop could be you know, somewhere around $8,840 or all the way as high as $8,800 you know, 50 or 88, 60. Okay. All right. So um, now going back to the analysis. Okay. So for the most part, like I've said, right, I really don't like the fact that we've consistently grinded here and put in lower lows on each of these wicks as per the four hour time frame. Okay. Uh, what this tells me is price for the most part is fairly bearish um, and we should be looking for more downside. Okay. Because also, we've kind of just, you know, hammered this 30-minute uh, black box over and over again. So where's the next area we should be looking forward to? Okay, so the next area we could be looking forward to is over here. Okay, so if price breaks that black box, like I just showed you right there, okay, we should be looking forward to this particular area right here. The lows of these wicks right here. Why? Because everyone who was long from this whole thing right here or all the way maybe even up here more than likely they probably have their last stops residing right there i mean it's very possible they have them way down here too but they would figure that i mean i guess if you know someone was smart um they would say that well 
chances are much higher that if price does come back down to this area, it's probably going to break it. So I'm just going to, you know, keep my stops up into this area, which is the lows of these wicks. And that's around, you know, 86.50 down to about $8,600. So that's, fi that's the $50 range that price could come back into, take out some liquidity and then push back up. Again, it doesn't have to, but it's an area that you need to watch for a potential bounce. Because I would say there's a lot of liquidity down here. And I would figure that there's going to be a lot of people shorting this area. And those people might get trapped as price bounces back up. Okay. Um, the way to spot and identify traps, one thing you can do is you can start learning EXO. Uh, you can come join the CryptoSomnia community. I explain uh, how to read the EXO charts pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, we have this Bitcoin analysis channel where I post updates pretty much you know, every few hours. Okay, so if you're interested in this kind of content with this kind of frequency, come join the CryptoSignac community, okay? Go to CryptoSignac.com, products page, and then you could click on the Advantage Membership. All right, this is taking a second, uh, right there. Okay, and you can see folks, you know, all the free content that we put out. I mean, this is just all free, by the way. So if this is all free, imagine how much more content, updates, trades, uh, information, education that you get in these lock channels that are for Advantage members. Again, we put out a video pretty much every single day and we started doing uh, equity market updates too. So last week we did an update, oh, where is it? Um, right there. So every Sunday we're starting to do a weekly breakdown and what to look forward to for the upcoming week for the equity markets. And as you guys very well know, uh, Bitcoin has been moving quite well with the uh, S&P 500 and the traditional markets, right? So if we just do this, so we do Bitcoin, okay, like that, and we do a compare S&P 500, okay, and let's lay it on top of each other. You can see right there, this is the S&P 500, look, at that you could see it moving down with it moving up with it moving up with it and then now moving down with it okay so it's doing a pretty good job bitcoin is doing a pretty good job of following the traditional markets because like i've said before uh, bitcoin has never really come across uh, recessive environments or especially you know when you have something like a global disaster like wars or coronavirus scares uh pandemics epidemics etc right so now you can really see the test of its you know quote unquote safe haven right which in my opinion it's still not uh but it's good it doesn't matter because we can still make money off it whether you're longing the market shorting the market etc okay um another way you can look at the larger perspective of price action is you know from this high I'm sorry, the, this low right here that we put in December 2019 around 6410 to this high around 10,550, you could see we bounce out the 50 fib, tried to climb above the 382 fib, got rejected. Now it looks like we're coming back towards the 50 fib again. More than likely when price does something like this, it's looking to head down lower. Okay, it's probably looking to head down into this area right here. All right, the golden pocket, which is around 78. $100 to $7,900, okay? Um, so, so this is you know, really where we are, folks. There's really not a whole lot of uh, price action developing. I don't see um, any real long opportunity just yet. I would probably say price has done a good job of showing you that there's a high, lower high, lower high, and now another lower high, okay? So do be careful if you're trying to catch the bottom on longs, right? You're probably gonna get your hands cut off. Um, so again, if you're looking for quick updates, uh, trade setups, and even a very detailed and heavy education section, I explain how to read and interpret open interest, which is, I guess, the meme of the week or month in crypto Twitter. Um, I explain how gaps work. I explain how VWAP is utilized. I send, you know, videos that I'm watching or that I think you should watch if you want to understand psychology of trading. I put out educational videos on how to trade for a living um, and even just, you know, nifty tricks of how to potentially uh, scalp, right? If you want to learn scalping strategies, if you're into scalping, like I just showed you earlier, you know, I just gave you an easy 15 minute scalp strategy. Look for the range high and the range low. 
uh, and you should be looking forward to this price, okay, potentially taking out this particular high. And that means that you could either go long from here, stop down here and target over here, or you could wait for price to come up here if you're not confident, and then potentially short right here with a stop somewhere up into this area, okay? Um, I think that's it, okay? So you guys have a couple things to look out for. I'm going to be giving a evening weekly update to my Advantage members. Again, if you are part of the Advantage community, you get evening updates as well as uh, these kinds of morning videos, right? So if you're into that kind of stuff and you want that kind of content and availability, uh, come join CryptoSomniac where you get all this content plus detailed back and forth discussions, plus you get to have um, analysis in the equities channel as well. And by the way, folks, we're actually opening up a Forex channel uh, starting uh, beginning of April, okay? So tons of content coming at you, tons of trade setups, education, um, and I hope you guys come join. All right, take care, cheers, and uh, keep your stops tight, okay?